Thanks a lot, mate. Feel that underwear. You dirty old man. All right, Terry. Go on, Billy, don't be shy, don't be shy. None of your North London sweatshop tat there. Yeah, but can it perform? Can it perform? Is the Pope Polish? Billy, I guarantee each one is made of genuine Taiwan porcelain. Yet they make it look like plastic so as not to frighten the very young children. I mean, look at the artwork in that face. Remarkably clever race, those Indians. I think it's all that salt. Listen to this. That's Arthur Daly. Champagne ideas, beer money. Diagnosis? His condition is acute. Prognosis? Lap of the gods. Time for a quickie before lunch, gentlemen. I do like to go to school. All the boys and girls are so nice to me. Will you come to school with me? She walks like she's suffering from pines. What do you expect for 15 quid, Ginger Rogers? You zip up your pockets and stroll down Oxford Street. They're knocking these out for 30 quid a go. I'll take 200. Cash. On delivery. To Leeds? I need an export license. Well, remember what our Prime Minister said. What, vote for me? No export or die. Billy, I'm working on a very narrow margin. The price does not include vans and Terry's wages while he's exploring north of Watford. I'll give you a ton now to cover Terry's exes. The rest on delivery. Done? Yeah, I think I have been. All right. I've got to dash. Better see a man about some toy dogs. Give us a bell when Terry's on his way. As long as it's before market day. No problem, Billy. Hello? Yeah, yeah, hold on a moment, will you, please? Hello? Yes, this is Arthur Daly. Yes, I did get your letters about my overdraft. No, I'm not ignoring them. I'm deeply preoccupied in trying to do what you asked. You said I've got to reduce them. Well, in fact, I'm in the middle of a business deal, right? You've done what? Do you realize the implications of bouncing my checks? My whole business empire is based on trust. Yes, of course, I'll come over right away. It'd be nice to see you, too. Even nicer to be listened to for a change. Lost your bearings, then? Eh? How do you mean? I thought people in Tom's usually confine themselves to bedrooms and bathrooms. I'm looking for Arthur Daly. My warrant. Warrant? Certificated bailiffs? Do you know Arthur Daly? Intimately, but not well. Must be that guy that works for him, Terry uh, McCann. It must have been bouncing checks. Rates bill, 1300, water rates 90. There are quite a few. I've got a court order to remove goods and chattels for sale by public auction. He's away on business at the moment. Those dolls in there, how much would they be worth? Very good, Veronica. Now, just pull in over to the side here, all right? That's it. There you go. Hold on. Yeah, um, try and remember to indicate. Sorry, Terry. That's all right. That's all right. You're doing well. Just remember, any fool can learn to drive. The trouble is, most of them do. <laughs> How am I doing? That's terrific. Well, I mean, we're still alive, aren't we? <laughs> Now, what was that for? Being so patient. Well, I can be very, very patient. <laughs> you should start your own teaching school. Right, what's next? Well, we could, um... No, right, no, what's next? Um, emergency stop, all right? Now, when I do that, you've got to stop, all right? I'm deeply concerned about this situation, Mr Daly. Well, I'm as deeply concerned as you are, Mr Pierce. We've been spending a great deal of our money recently. I was under the impression I was spending my money. No, no, Mr. Daly, not so. You've stopped spending your money 
nearly two months ago. Since then, you've been utilizing your overdraft facility. Currently, you're 7,000 pounds above the agreed limit. Oh, I wanted to uh, talk to you about uh, increasing the agreed limit. Yes, but I like my customers to talk to me before acting as if I had already agreed to their request. Well, you're a very busy man. I didn't want to bother you. Justin! Oh, Struth! I'm sorry, I'm sorry, oh, No, sorry. it's all right, it wasn't your fault. No, 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 it wasn't your fault. You're all right? Yeah. You're all right? Yeah. You stay there, then. Just go and see what happened, all right? Don't worry, yeah. don't worry. Lovely, isn't it? Don't worry, Till. I saw everything, and I'll be an independent witness at the trial. Public spirited little Wally, and we. Well, you weren't even looking where you're going. You was far too close, and you were speeding. I'm not sure, but I think I just heard an unusually long suicide message. I don't think he could have seen anything, do you, McCann? No, not a thing. No, no, Mr. Rycott, no. Terry, he just. Shut, Shut up. up. Uh, I do have a number of excellent and highly lucrative business proposals in the pipeline. The profit potential should run into five figures. How did you know I was going to say that? Mm, because that's what you said when I agreed your present overdraft limit. And we don't need something more tangible than that, Mr. Daly. And with the greatest respect, none of us getting any younger. How true. How very true. You mean me? Well, it has to be a factor, you know. If you were a younger man at the start of life's great adventure, I might be able to take a more lenient view of the situation, but based on all the available data, at your age, you're a bad risk. Yes? Thank you. Dear old dear Mr. Denning, not your lucky day, I'm afraid. Apparently your car is being given a ticket. What? Usual, Dave. You better stick half up for Terry. Then you get thirsty going up the leads. Hey, you're on the wrong side of the bar. Where's Dave? Popped out. That'd be one hundred and seventeen pounds. What? You've been taken over by Arabs? Stick it on my slate. No, that's what you already owe the slate. Ah, come on. Ah, naughty, naughty. I'm not at liberty to give you credit. Not you, Terry. Not you as well. Oh, thanks, Joe. Hello, oh, Arthur. Oh, what's up? Then? I tried to get him to pay his bar bill. <laughs> you might have overdone it. Arthur, you're not crying, are you? No, Dave. I'm drained of all emotion. Had a bad day, then. On a scale of one to ten, today is twelve. You better have a recount. Why? You know you wanted me to take them talking dolls up to Billy in Leeds. He bought two hundred, cash on delivery. Yeah, well, you've got more chance of getting them there if you put them on the North Circular, press the little buttons and let them walk up the M1. What is the matter with you? It's not me. There's nothing the matter with me. It's my motor. Well, what's the matter with your motor? What's... Hold on, hold on. Justin, come here, mate. Tell him what's the matter with my motor. <laughs> Rear suspension, almost ripped out. Right got him, straight up to Jaxi. Just another example of police brutality, Arthur. I can get it fixed, but you're looking about two and a half. 250? That's more than I pay for the car. Hey, look, can't you see if you can get that van going? Well, we've got two small points here. You see, firstly, I'm not a mechanic. And secondly, that van hasn't moved since we towed it into the car lot. Uh, Arthur, yeah. uh, the keys are over there in the corner. What's the word with you? Who is it? I don't know. No. Hold up, he's inviting us over for a drink. Come on, come on. No, no, not you. Look, you go and find Arnie for us, will you? All right. Good boy. Hey, Terry, Terry, stick close with me. If he asks for money, hit him. Mr. Daly. Mr. McCann. My name is Guy Wheeler. Do sit down, won't you? Oh, thank you. Uh, large vodka and tonic at the Largo, wasn't it? Oh, very nice. nice. Thank you. Well, I'll wait for service. Oh, Cheers. Thank you. Add one for yourself, then, not. Oh, thank you, Carlos, sir. Mr. Daly, there's a business proposition I'd like to talk to you about. Oh, yes. Uh, what, uh, what exactly have you got in mind? Well, first, uh, what about you and I having lunch at my club? Oh, that'd be very nice. No, he can't. No, no. He's taking me out to lunch. Um, Terry, please. Mr. Wheeler, I noticed you when I was at the bar, and I said, 
That is the sort of gentleman I could do business with. Didn't I, Terry? Did you? Yes, yeah, Terry, when you finish your drink, why don't you pop into our car showrooms and give the engine of that van a tweak? Tweak? Transplant, you mean, don't you? You are taking me out to lunch. Terry, I did not get where I am today, and I'm sure Mr Wheeler didn't, by worrying about our creature comforts. Listen, you. I've unloaded five gross of those poxy dolls on the strength of you standing me lunch. Yeah, pray excuse me, Mr Wheeler. Oh, uh, Terry. Terry. This is the first glimmer of sunshine I've had all day, and you're trying to nose it up. Look, my nose is never wrong, and it smells money. Yeah, well, Mum wants to smell lunch. And what's all this moody about give the van a tweak? I'm not your mechanic. And you are not a businessman either. You do the van, I do the business. And what about my lunch? Dave, give him a couple of cheese rolls, will you? Lashing out, as usual. Tell, he won't come. Why not? Well, he reckons half are still owes him from the last job. Ugh. All right, look, bum me those overalls, will you? I didn't get where I am today worrying about creature comforts. Do you know anything about these? Yeah, you put your legs in there. No, not these, that van, you pillock. Menu, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Nice place here. Not bad, is it? Drink all right? Uh, yes, yes, lovely. I can recommend the filet mignon. Look, um, don't think I'm probing, but um, what line of business are you in? Much the same as yours. Really? Buying, selling, entrepreneurial activities. Ah, I should have guessed. Not what it was, is it? Well, nothing is. Yeah. Be an entrepreneur these days, you've got to have wall-to-wall -wall high tech, sloppy disks. I mean, all the big lads in the city now, they've got chains of laundries constantly washing their foreign currencies. I bet you've got a couple of laundries in your portfolio, eh? Well, I'm not first division. Mine are more laundrettes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm beginning to feel like an old banger on the highway of life. Overtaken. Not much room for the small man now. I suppose it's progress. No, no, if you want to see a really professional entrepreneur, Look at her at number 10. A very clever woman. Clever? Bloody genius. I mean, who else? Who else could have done what she's done? I mean, she has sold the nation a whole host of things they already owned. Gas, phones, oil, owls. I mean, she can sell shares in owls. Owls? Well, what is this channel if it's not owl in the ground? All right. That you, Justin? Well, I'll tell you what, mate, if I get this thing moving, it'll be the greatest comeback since Lazarus. <laughs> My God! The places people get into, they hide from me. <laughs> Who's that? Tell him I can't sit him out, find you here. Do what? Oi! Where are you? Don't try to make a run for it. Make a run for it? What are you talking about? Who are you? I am Baron McKenna, court bailiff. I'm going to distrain goods to the value of £3,745. Now then, Mr. Daly, which of these cars are your property? Uh, and to follow, I'll, uh, I'll have the, um, the filleted menu yeah, off the bone. Very good, sir. Thank you. Tony? I'm just about to cast my bread upon the waters. Thought I'd give you a final check. The conditions look absolutely perfect, Guy. I recommend that you proceed. Good. Well, he's as vulnerable now as he's ever going to be. I recommend you go for gold, Guy. You know, Arthur, you impress me. Ever since we first met in the Winchester, you haven't once asked me what my business proposition is. Slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. How <laughs> true. Uh, very true. Well, let's get it out of the way before lunch. I want to buy you out. Buy me out? Some clients of mine would like to buy your car lot and your lockup. I've had an independent valuation made of the properties, and I think you'll agree that my offer based on that valuation. Very generous.
good to see you again so soon, Mr. Daly. And don't worry about a thing. I think you've made a very wise decision. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. Congratulations, Guy. He took the bait beautifully. Hook, line, and sinker. Excellent. Oh, Terry. I take it the van is ready for the run up to Leeds to Billy? You kidding? That van's got about as much life in it as Queen Victoria. Arnie won't come out until you're paying for the last job he did. The bailiffs have been round looking for £4,000, and quite frankly, I've had it up to here. Terence, my son, worry and fret no more. I bring you tidings of great joy. Oh, yeah. What's that? My retirement, Terry. My retirement. Here. Well, perhaps next time you'll concentrate on the road instead of the crumpet. Will I? Anyway, I have the consolation of knowing that the form fill-in for this little lot will fill up your next two days off. Got a little trouble, have we? No. We're playing Hunt the Fimble. Hello, are you going into court today, are you? No, no, I've got the rest of the day off. Clean desk, empty in tray, no outstanding queries. You love yourself, don't you, Taffy? Eh? I bet if you was a chocolate, you'd eat yourself. <laughs> Such wit you have. Such a wit. Don't work too hard, no? Do you know what is stopping your promotion, Mellish? Oh, I wish I knew, Gav. I sat the sergeant's exam five times. What is stopping your promotion is your failure to mix with the right sort of people. When did you last roll your trouser legs up? Well, two years ago, Gov. A day trip to Brighton. Exactly. Mr. McCann? William Pierce. Should come this way. I don't think we met before. Are you new to the area? No, no, no. no. I've lived here all my life. Really? Yeah. Do sit down, Mr. McCann. Thank you. <coughs> so. How can I help you? Well, I need to arrange a loan. We'll certainly come to the right place. How much did you have in mind? £50,000. You'll be opening an account with us, of course. Now, how much will your initial deposit be? No, you don't seem to understand. I don't want to put any in. I want to take 50000 out. I just need an, uh, an overdraft, that's all. <laughs> but first things first. When you've opened an account, we'll assess how much we can loan you based upon your assets house, income, that sort of thing. Well, all right, then, if it's absolutely necessary, I'll open an account. But first, I need the overdraft. Well, let's establish a few facts. How much do you earn? Well, on a good week, uh, 150, 200 pounds. Are you seriously asking me to loan you 50,000 pounds when you only earn 150 pounds a week? Well, yeah. <laughs> but what assets do you own? Uh, house, shares? Shares? Me? No, no, I haven't got any of those, no. Well, well I've got my flat. Well, it's rented. The trouble is, it's, it's all against you, isn't it? And particularly your age. My age? Well, if you were an older man, well on the way in life's great adventure, I might be able to take a more relaxed view, but you're young and that makes you a bad risk. No, no, but I've got prospects, you see. Now, if you give me the dough, the, uh, the money, I can buy out the man I work for. He's retiring. What's his line of business? Well, he's got a car lot and a lock-up. A car lot and a lock-up? Yeah, I've got very big plans for them. But would your employer be a well-known local entrepreneur? Yeah, I have heard him called that, yeah. Among other things. <laughs> All right? All right, lads? Dave. Oh. I was advised by Terry this morning that my bar bill stood at 117 quid. Is that correct? Yeah, plus uh, for the two large VATs or the two cheese rolls for... Take it out of that. And while you're at it, my usual, 
Drink for little Justine here. Drink for the boys over there. And you have one yourself. No, 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 Dave. Mine's a large vodka. It's all right, Arthur. This one's for me. Are you sure you're all right, Arthur? I mean, you don't look bronze. I should like to formally announce that I am going to retire. Yeah, and you just got here. I am relinquishing my throne, Justine. I am abandoning the international infrastructure that has been my life's work. You had an offer for the lock-up, then? Not only the lock-up, Dave. Carl and all. Lock, stock and barrel. Go on, Benny. No, no, no. Guy Wheeler. Viva de Spania. All oh, right. You're going to retire to the Costa Packet, then? Her indoors has let it be known that she would like us to spend the late summer of our life on the sunny side of the strata. She's fallen in love with the English culture and the Spanish cuisine out there. They can do things with two sausage, egg and chips that has to be seen to be believed. It will hold property is certainly cheap. Yeah, but what are you going to do for mates? Well, I understand there's some of my old friends out there, former British entrepreneurs. Mm. So what's this guy, Wheeler, got planned for your properties, then? Ours not the reason why. Ours but to flog and fly. Have I been flogged and all, Arthur? Terence, my son. Oh, look at him. He must be going to a function. Dave, give him a drink. Yeah, I'll have a quadruple gin and tonic in a straight glass. So, has this Ponce Wheeler bought me and all? Of course not. I did have a word with him about you. I mean, would I forget you, Terry? Well, what did he say? Um, well, he, he said he's, uh, he's not in the market for a mature minder. Do what? Well, he said, uh, you're too old. Well, in that case, you'll be making Terry redundant. Yeah, in that case, I suppose I am. Well, then he'll be due some redundancy pay, won't he? Don't fret, Justine. I'll look after him, don't worry. No, 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 I want a figure. State it now publicly in front of witnesses. Made payable on the day you complete the deal. So how much, Arthur? Eh? What's it worth, all those years of aggravation? The right hand is a cop for you. The bird I did for you. It all mounts up, Arthur, so how much? Come on, how much? Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to calculate all that up, you know. Well, that's all right. We'll help you. Look, the fairest way seems to be to give Terry a percentage of the purchase price, right? How much is Wheeler paying you? Well, Arthur told me it was 50 grand, didn't you, Arthur? Well, then, 10% of the purchase price seems reasonable. It may sound reasonable to you, Justin, but you're being very cavalier with my retirement pension. Uh, Terry, how about uh, 2%? Of the purchase price? That's ridiculous, Tell. Justine. Shut up. Is it a deal, Terry? So it's 2% of the purchase price, right? Yeah. Yeah, that'll do nicely, thank you. Terry, that's only a grand. Justin, if you care for your continued health, keep out of this. No, that's all right, Arthur. Don't worry, Justin. Everybody's just heard Arthur agree to pay me five grand. Five grand? Yeah, 2% of the purchase price. I just discovered that Guy Wheeler is paying you 250,000 pounds. And five grand of that is mine. Yeah, yeah, all right, Terry. You, you, you have my word. No, I'm going to have more than that. I'm going to stick to you like super glue. At the planning committee meeting tomorrow morning, I shall recommend approval of the application, with, of course, one very important amendment. Of course. And then I shall close the deal. I'm not going to do a runner while you're up in Leeds. Correction, you're not going to do a runner because I'm not going to be up in Leeds. All I'm asking is one last favour. No. Is this what I get for looking after you all these years? No, this is what you get for the way you looked after me all these years. What price loyalty? What price integrity? Five grand. There's more to life than money, you know. Yeah? Like what? Well... Keep him one's word. <laughs> there is a little man waiting patiently in Leeds for me to keep my word. Well, he's going to have to wait a bleeding long time then, isn't he? Listen, if you're so bothered, why don't you take him up yourself? Because I've got to stay here and sign contracts. The phone's ringing. Hello? Hello, Billy. Oh, we're just talking about you. How are you? No, 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 we're not having a party here. Yeah? Just a second, Terry, turn that thing off. 
it's about the dog. Yeah, yeah, Billy, I look, look, I know time is knocking on, but yeah, hang on a second, will you? Knock it off, Terry. About the dog. Look, Billy, leave it to me. No expense will be spared. OK? Bye-bye. You are Terry McCann. And you've been taking the mickey. Uh, perhaps I could uh, pour a little oil on troubled waters. There has been an unfortunate misunderstanding. Exactly. And you have now instructed your bank to pay the full amount owing on the various bills. Yeah, precisely. And if I care to check with the court, I will find that all the bills have been paid. Oh, definitely. <laughs> in view of the fact that your previous check bounced, you'll need to pay cash. In the meantime, I'm taking walking possession of your car lot and its contents, this lock-up and its contents, and your car outside. Any other car I see you driving will be automatically impounded. Until I'm advised by the court that you have paid all outstanding bills and all outstanding charges, all of this is mine. So don't go mutilating any more of the stock. Those dolls are not my property. They belong to Billy from Leeds. Show me the paperwork and I will release them. Don't stay in there grinning. Do something. From what I hear, you've been putting it about that I'm Arthur Daly. Everything here is impounded for seven days, at which point I shall review the situation. At which point, you great are both smoky, I'll be long gone from this metropolis. And at which time, you can take them dolls and shove them up your pea brush. Terry, come on in. Oh, thank you, George, for such a lucid analysis. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're all agreed that this is a most exciting development, one with enormous potential for the borough. A supermarket complex set in a modern shopping plaza would be profoundly beneficial. Uh, subject, of course, to the supermarket chain accepting our uh, one small reservation. Oh, thank you, Veronica. That is an additional access point for the public in this area. I understand that at the moment it's occupied by some old block-up. Well, shall we take a formal vote at this time on the application for outline planning permission? Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Got it? <laughs> Where do you come from? Well, my mummy said it was a stalk, but I don't really believe her. It's true what they say about local councils, isn't it? Well, they all broken off for coffee. No, they're all in the council chambers. And there's a big planning meeting. Oh. Now, what would you say if you and I had our own planning meeting later on, eh? <laughs> what will we be planning? Well, tonight's forthcoming attractions. <laughs> Sound good? All right, I'll give you a ring later. Don't you want a coffee or anything? No, I can't. Arthur's waiting. I'll see you later. OK, see you later. I'm sure you know what you're doing here. Yeah, of course. Come on. Better frame that. Oi, that was a tenner. Listen, if that big Scotchman thinks I'm going to be reduced to jostling with a common herd on buses, he's mistaken. You're talking about a lot of money with these, sunshine. Good morning, sir. Just, 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 just a minute. Never mind that. What about the dolls and Billy? No, 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 I told you. Lolly before Dolly. You fetch the manager, would you? Tell him I'm trade, I'm paying cash, and I expect at least 15% discount, and I'd like one of these in white delivered to my villa on the Costa Brava within one month. Yes, sir. Are you going to toot around my bar in one of these? Well, not for long, no, but getting it here and having it shipped out, there's no VAT. After about a month, this will be a nice little learner. Yes, I like that one. So would I. I'll, uh, I'll leave a deposit. Early indoors will come in later to try it on for size. Do what? Well, come in handy for when it rains. In Spain? Well, yeah, it, it, it do rain in Spain. Where? Mainly in the plain. Well, they're good of you to shout me lunch, aren't they? Oh, at least I can do, Andrew. After the way you've looked after my financial affairs all these years. Uh. Any particular reason for this unexpected pleasure? Yes, I think all the loyal members of my organisation should be suitably rewarded, <laughs> as Erin Dawes and me sail into the sunset. 
He's retiring to Spain. Oh. <laughs> retiring? Look, there's your tax bill. Don't worry, Andrew. I've sold a car lot and a lock-up. There'll be plenty of money to take care of them little odds and ends. Can I tell you about these little odds and ends? By all means. If you sell all these properties, you will be liable to capital gains tax on all money derived from the sale at 40%. Then there's failure to submit tax returns. I've been busy. Well, for the past six years, look, you may recall that the Inland Revenue raised an estimated assessment for those years. It was for £50,000. <laughs> I've been paying it off. <laughs> at the rate of £200 a year. And you only paid that for one year. So, they are invoking a stiff penalty clause and claiming interest on the unpaid assessed amount. Look, Andrew, I'm a simple man. When all that has been paid off, how much will I have left to retire on? How much are you selling the properties for? 250000 250000 £5,000. pounds. And that's mine. Well, it's a good job you told me all about this before you exchanged contracts. <laughs> he exchanged contracts an hour ago. Gentlemen, I have exchanged contracts with Arthur Daly. So, we're now the proud owners and a disgusting little car lot and a ratty little lock-up which we will shortly sell to a certain supermarket chain for at least three times what we paid for it. I think the least we can do is raise our glasses in a toast to our benefactor. To Arthur, Arthur Daly. Daly. Now, let me just review the situation to ensure there is no misunderstanding. Thank you, Maureen. Having agreed to sell your properties to uh, Guy Wheeler for the sum of £250,000, we, acting on your instructions, earlier today exchanged contracts. Subsequently, after discussion with your accountant, you have concluded that such a sale would not be in your best interest. Be disastrous. Mm, and as such, you wish to break the contract, cancel the sale, and retain ownership of the car lot and the locker. Well, I don't see any great problem here, Mr. Daly. You don't? No. Not in normal circumstances, of course, the purchaser would go to court for an order of specific performance, but I think you'll find here we're all right. Well, thank God for that. I don't mind admitting I was a bit worried for a while. Now, are you saying you can cancel the sale for him? I can't tell you what a relief that is. Yeah, but what about her indoors and the Costa? Another day. I thought it was too good to be true. There will be some expense, of course. Oh, of course. We'll send a bill to Andrew. Uh, no, I don't mean our bill. I was referring to the clause that was inserted in the event that you broke the contract. Clause? What clause? Now, I shall have to return the deposit, of course. Ten percent of the purchase price. And you are then liable for £25,000 to Mr Wheeler for breaking the contract. I, are you saying I've got to pay him 25000 to keep something I already own? Exactly. One red T Reg Honda Civic, 23,000 miles, one owner and none. Got it, Ginger? Right, how much? Oh, come on, Ginger, it's a matter of life and death. Right. An R Reg Volvo 34 DL, a snip of 485, once owned by the Bishop of Tottenham. All right, Ginger? Look, Ginger, I specialise in buying vehicles from the religious orders. Hey, Terry. Where's that Merc the Cardinal brought in? Uh, no, no, Mr Patel, this is strictly cash. No checks, no plastic, just money. Right, Terry, what's next? Vote for Neil Kinnock mugs. Too gross. Pristine condition. No, 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 take the long view, Imran. There's bound to be another election one day. Right, what's next? Charles and Di shaving mirrors. A monkey. Oh, uh, 500. They'll be worth a fortune when he becomes king. Two pound to go. About three pounds a time. Sold to the man with... I'll ring you back, Imran. I've just turfed a certain ginger wire off of my car lot. Your car lot? It's my car lot, and I'm going to fight to keep it that way. No, it's mine, until you pay the amount owing on these summonses. I thought you might ignore that fact and start moving my goods and chattels. But hold on, look. He's trying to raise the dough to pay off his debts, right? Now, how's he supposed to do that if you won't let him sell his gear? That's his problem. 
I've changed the locks at the car lot. I must ask you to vacate these premises so that I can change the locks here. Ah, oh, come on, Jock, have art. Yeah, come on, be reasonable. The last time we met, you were telling me to stuff your talking dolls up my pea brush. Now you want me to be reasonable. I'm not paid to be reasonable. Look, you've impounded my car, you won't let me sell off any of my stock, and now you want to lock me out of my lock-up. Haven't you had a good day at the office? We are merely doing our job. There are, however, mitigating circumstances that I'm allowed to take into consideration. Well, like what? If you're elderly or suffering from a severe illness, my office will view your case sympathetically. Why didn't I think of that before? <coughs> it's silly, really. I should have come to you in the first place. Last time I was here, you said that if I needed funding in the short term, you'd be happy to oblige. Indeed, I did. Now, with regard to those court orders, unfortunately, they won't accept payment by cheque. No, that's because you bounced the last one. <laughs> yes, well, quite. Do sit down, Mr. Denning. Thank you. Now, the sum is £2,300.70. I think we can advance you there in cash. Um, I think I should explain something. Hmm? What's the problem, Bill? Daly wants to do what? But he's already exchanged. And are you going to lend him 25000 so he can tell us to get stuffed? Good. Look, I I'll contact Guy. Can he be here at five o'clock? Right. Terry? Well, it seems like Daly's well and fully in it, I grant you. But you wouldn't really expect me to break down and cry at that, would you? Uh, hold on, Taffy. I'm not asking you to put on a charity concert for him. Arthur's been stitched before, but this is different. Why? I'm no grass right? so don't ask me how I found this out. But there's a bloke who works at the council offices. He's called Davis. He works for the planning department. Seems to me he's taken a very unhealthy interest in Arthur's affairs. Oh? In what way? Well, like chatting to his bank manager and making sure that the bank doesn't lend Arthur the 25 grand he needs. Did he know? Yeah, he did. And, and this bloke who's buying Arthur out is supposed to be ever so shrewd, right? So? Well, if he's so shrewd, how come he's willing to pay a fortune for something that's not worth a fraction of the price? Now, why would Guy Wheeler do that? I reckon he found out about Arthur's place at one of those Freemasons' knees-ups. Why do you say that? Well, Davis is a mason, keeps his little black case at the office. I reckon Wheeler's one of the Brotherhood and all. Hey, where you been? I've been waiting ages. About to see someone. How'd you get on? Well, I was doing all right till I told him I changed my mind about selling, and you seemed to upset him. Froze me bank account again. Oh, cool. Any messages at the Winchester? Oh, yeah, Billy from Leeds rang twice. He's getting anxious about the shortage of dolls in Yorkshire. I wish that was my only problem. Well, you got any more bright ideas? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have. Taxi! Taxi! Oh, what? Uh... They can't all know. Come on. I have to make the supreme sacrifice. going. What's it got to do with you? You just drive the bus. I'll deal with a conductor. Your pass. What's he talking about, Terry? He wants your pass. What pass? Your senior citizen's bus pass. How dare you? There you go, I'll have two forties. Sorry about that. Ah, don't worry, mate. We get them like your dad all the time. Must be a terrible problem for you. Yeah, well, I'll do my best to cope. Yeah. I'll check his flies. Pardon? Check his flies. We get him in all sorts of conditions on here. You look very wobbly. You'd better sit down. Beginning to feel like your runner. Any messages? Well, apart from Billy from Leeds. Okay. Yeah, again. Oh, and the missus phoned Dave. Who? Her indoors. Oh. What for? She phoned from that fur shop. You know that check you left as a deposit? 
Doing, doing, doing. How long do they keep you waiting here? The DHSS. People have been known to die waiting in here. I think that one has. Which of you is Arthur Daly? I am. And who is this? Oh, this is my personal assistant, who is here to, um... Personally assist him. Hmm. There are chairs. <laughs> now, what can I do for you, Mr. Daly? Uh, I'm planning uh, early retirement. I'd like to apply for my government golden handshake. You wish to retire? Uh, yes, with the appropriate remuneration, yes. I find the papers in your file fascinating reading. Thank you. Yes, according to these notes, you owe us quite a bit. Your last national insurance payments were made in 1957. Well, I have been preoccupied helping Britain with the export drive. Glad to hear it. Have you studied uh, Form NI48 dealing with unpaid and late contributions? Uh, not, not, not lately, no. Oh, here you are. I think you should also read this one on industrial injuries. Uh, and this one that covers mental breakdowns. And there are these other various leaflets and booklets you should have a look at. Uh, well, no doubt I'll read these in the fullness of time. But uh, meanwhile, could you tell me what sort of lump sum I could expect to receive? Based on the information before me, I think I am safe in saying that you probably can't afford to retire. But you certainly can't afford to die. If you were ever offered a job as a getaway driver, turn it down. Ooh. Are you sure this is on the up and up, Arthur? Uh, Justine, would I con you? No, Terry's gone off somewhere with the only set of keys. Come on, open it up. Good boy. Now, let's get 200 of them dollies on board. Billy from Leeds will give you an envelope for me. Bring it straight back and I'll give you some wages. Well, just see. All right. Yeah. Oh, they sound a bit close, don't they? Hello. What have we here? If it isn't the boy wonder. Shopping early for Christmas, are we? No, I'm just doing half a daily a favour. Oh, did you hear that, Mellish? He's doing daily a favour. Breaking and entering and stealing. Looks like three favours to me, Gov. Arthur, come sort these two out, will ya? He talks to himself as well. Probably on some drug. Arthur! Are you going to come down the station without any fuss? Or are you going to make my day? Look, I told you, I'm just doing a favour for Arthur. My son, Her Majesty's prisons are full of people who were just doing somebody a favour. Take him away, Mellish. Arthur! Oh. What's right, cut? Do it. Dear old Laura, I can't leave you alone for a minute, can I? Well, that's very. Just wanted to get the dollies up to Billy. Help raise a few quid. Water to 25,000 I've got to raise. All right, I'll give you. Come on, help me load this lot onto Justin's van. And I'll drive them up the leads for you, all right? We haven't had a chance to talk properly. 
I've been a guest of yours at the last two meetings. Oh, how do you do? I'm... Don't tell me. You're Guy Wheeler, and you're a property developer. <laughs> and Tony Davies, you're a planning officer of the local council. And what about me, then? Oh, you're William Pierce. You're a bank manager. Very good. Do you do card tricks as well? I haven't finished yet. There's something else I know about you three. You're all bent. Bent? Don't get excited. Just thank your lucky stars that you're all members of this lodge. Now, the last thing I want is the Freemasonry being dragged through the mud. I know what you've been up to. And I think it's time we had a little chat. No dolls. No dolls. These dolls. I'll kill him. Oh, well, I'll kill you, Arthur. Take it. Ah, Mr. Daly and the other faithful Mr. McCann. You said on the phone there'd been some development. Is Wheeler going to sue me for breach of contract? He's pulled out. He's broken the contract, called off the purchase. So that means I don't have to find the 25,000? On the contrary, it cuts two ways, you know. Now, do you mean that Arthur keeps his properties and the 25 grand deposit? Yes, I do. I understand Wheeler has been strongly advised to take this course of action by his business colleagues. <laughs> oh, nice one, Jonesy. No, Muir's the name. Uh, I'll let you know when we receive the money. Yeah, you do that, Sunshine. Yeah, no, no, Terry. Terry. Cheers. Our agreement was 2% at a purchase price. I haven't sold the properties. Well, what does that 25 grand you copped count as? Well, that sort of uh, act of God. Cobblers. If I hadn't got onto Jones, you'd still be running around like headless chicken, trying to save your properties. Oh, gold. That's another thing. Put me in a very awkward situation with Jones. What are you on about now? I owe him a favour. No, more than a favour. He should be on an earner for this. You suggested I should pay money to a policeman who lost an evil of your senses or something? No, no, where it might end. If you wanted to buy me drinks and all that next. Yeah, well, never mind about all that. Let's get back to how much you owe me. The phone's ringing. Now, come on, how much? Look, technically speaking... Oh, don't give me all that. How much? A thousand. All right, it's a deal. Shake on it. I am shaking and the phone's ringing. <laughs> Hello? Arthur, it's me. Hello, Billy. Told you I wouldn't let you down, didn't I? You must be joking. Oh, hey, 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 steady, 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 Billy. Those what, what, dolls are... what are you talking about? Those dolls you saw. Well, hang, hang on a minute, Terry. Terry, get one of them dolls down, will you? Now, dolls. calm down, Billy. Calm down. Well, what's the idea, then? You probably got a rogue doll. Rogue doll? Well, you know, like a Friday car. Arthur, I get want some me money back. I mean, like fine wine, you know, they don't always travel. I don't know what you're talking about. There's no dolls. How many pockets can you... You know what I mean? Buy the number. Japanese or something? Still playing with the merchandise, I see. Now, don't tell me you're about to pay your debts. I'm a patient man, but enough is enough. I'm confiscating this entire stock of dolls. They'll be sold, and the money's used to settle your debts. Um, if you like, I could get you another couple of hundred from Leeds. I belong to Glasgow, the year of Glasgow town. There's something that a Glasgow cause is going round and round.